Okay, now that we've covered the general introduction to the shop floor application, uh, in this video, I'm going to give you a general overview of how to add an operator and set up an operator account. Now, it's not too complicated. Uh, one of the things that you need to keep an eye on when you're starting with your demo, for example, is if you're on the essentials plan, uh, when you're in the settings screen, you won't have some of the options that you see currently on my screen. You'll have to probably upgrade first, but upgrading is super easy. So upgrading your account would be directly from up here in the top right under team and then choose add team member and then select an operator. So it will provide you the prompts that you would have to do in order to upgrade correctly. Now you must be an admin of the account in order for that to work. Otherwise you won't be able to see or have access to any of these types of uh, uh, required things to do the upgrade to get access to the shop floor control. Also, anybody who's adding operators must be an admin user. So do keep those in mind as you start working with this and getting set up. So first things first, what is the difference between a user and an operator? A user is basically the person that sees what I'm showing you right now. This is presently the back office version of your Katana account. And as a user, I can see pretty much everything in the whole entire Katana account. And so I can edit it too. This is including information that's probably important for your business, like uh, the products that you sell, the prices, the costs that are associated with making those, um, the margin. One thing you probably don't want your operators on the manufacturing floor to see are things like the costs because they obviously know how much they sell for. And some companies, if their floor staff understand the margin that they make, it definitely is not something that you want to be visible. Um, plus, you know, private data from your clients, making sure your manufacturing people only see what they need to see, and that's it. The things that they do see um, with respect to the shop floor application is only uh, whatever you have specified here in the settings, but also um, anything that pertains to their tasks, the manufacturing orders that they have to work on, uh, ingredients lists, if it's available in stock. If you have any of these uh, settings turned on, for example, that give them certain additional rights, uh, those are types of things that they can see, edit, and do. But uh, we'll go deeper into that as we get more talking specifically about the shop floor application. Uh, but to add a user, uh, sorry, to add an operator, uh, you'll go into add a team member and then choose operator. Pretty simple and straightforward. I have also already added a few operators here, but um, let's say that we're going to add a uh, an operator named Maria. And what you want to do is give them a six digit pin code. So the six digit pin code is their specific pin code for their specific operator. And it's what they will use to log into the application. So we're going to just keep ours simple so I can memorize it for our demo, but this will be four, uh, six fours. And we choose add. Now, this is the operator setup part. And when you set up an operator device uh, and you've added the username and pin number, it'll ask you to set up the device and then it will show you a QR code. Now the shop floor app is compatible with any smart device whether it's a phone or a tablet, doesn't matter. You'll open up your camera to activate it in the first time you're doing this. Now remember, you have to be an admin to make this work. So if you're just a regular user on the account who don't doesn't have access to billing, you might not be able to do this. Um, however, I do think that we do have some settings currently that enable you to add users without being the admin owner, but uh, I'll have to confirm that. Anyway, you take, your, you take your camera, you open it up, and then you scan the QR code and it will provide you a link. That link will then open up the application itself that will look kind of like this. And on this page is where you will add the uh, specific code which that user will be required to put in. So this is the four listed six times, and then you would choose the login option here. So once the user has logged in, it'll confirm that this has been activated. And then you'll actually be able to see it right here on my screen. Once I choose continue to the app, it will activate the QR code inside of here as well. And then just hit next and finish. 
Okay, so a little bit more about these QR codes uh, and, and, and how they're used and why are they important. Um, in order to log into the Shopfloor application, you must have the QR code readily available. And the QR code is the uh, access link between your specific Katana account's um, Shopfloor team to use. So we recommend uh, opening it up, printing out the QR code, and then when the QR code is printed up, you can just you know, glue it next to the workstation where they are going to log in. If you don't do it that through that methodology, then you know at least provide a, a screen print for your floor team if they're using their phone devices to log in. Um, and also, uh, if needed, if you're using a desktop or device, you can capture the URL if required and set up a shortcut link to put in the code. So there's a variety of different ways to do this. But this is definitely needed and necessary for every single um, account uh, to be able to access. If you have people that perform work from home, like in some manufacturing companies, you can actually take the materials home if you're doing like thread work or something, um, then they'll still need this QR code in order to sign in. If they don't have the QR code, it will be a problem because they won't be able to get it themselves. You need an admin account or a user back in on the account in order to pull it up for them. So that's how that works. And um, pretty straightforward, and it's not too complicated. So I've got four operators on this account. I'll show you a bit more information about how those interact with each other as we as we carry along. But when it comes to the setup, there's a couple other areas that are important to talk about. Firstly, uh, going into the settings screen, we have uh, two areas that I think are the most important to think about. Or actually, I would say, yeah, two areas resources, and the shop floor app settings. So let's talk about resources because this is more relevant for the setup side. Now, any manufacturing company is going to have generally their own specific requirements for how they organize their shop floor. There's no one set way of doing this. What I'm trying to show you in this video is a couple examples that will help you think about what works best. Now, I'm look, talking to two types of audience. You could either be a customer who's coming from the essentials plan and upgrading to advanced and using this um, like as an upgrade, or you could be a completely new customer. So let's start off with the person who's upgrading. Now, if you've upgraded on your account or you've done the trial before even activating the shop floor application, you're going to notice that, especially if you've uh, used the product over time and in the past, you'll have dedicated resource names. Now, Resource names can be given to basically two types of resources, uh, a human resource or a tool slash workstation resource. And that particular resource name it can be organized however you want to use it. You can either put it as the name of a person. You could put it as the title of a person. You could also maybe even put it as a dedicated tool or workstation location within your shop floor. Small companies typically have one person that can do a wide variety of tasks. Larger companies typically have one resource or workstation that have a lot of human resources that are attacking it. So it's kind of like a double whammy whenever it comes to figuring out what works best for your use case. Now with the shop floor application, what makes it a little bit different is you have to determine what works best in your, in your business. Do you want to give these a particular name? Like, for example, if I have a paint booth, but I have three workers who work there, I'm going to have three human resource operator logins. Or do I, if that's not so important to me, then maybe I could just leave the table saw by itself as its own resource name and then create an operator called table saw and then just have like a universal login for every person who's working in the team. So if you've got a business where you have multiple people that work on one or two main workstations, you might want to just set up individual operators as the workstation name itself. It might not be important for you at that point in time to uh, have dedicated operators for a dedicated tool or workstation. But if you're on the flip side of that coin, uh, where you have a specific workstation, maybe you're running three shifts on it and you've got 15 people that use it, then you probably need 15 operators for that particular workstation. So, However it works best for you is however you need to think about how to set it up. So when you add your operators, 
Think about that prior to doing so. What Katana allows you to do after you create the shop floor application operators is you can assign a default operator to those different resources. In our case, I'm going to use the use case with people as operators because it's easy to kind of demonstrate what that means, especially when I'm using an example like paint booth um, for our demo. But again, there's no wrong way to do it. You have to do it in the way that works best for your business. So we try to retain as much flexibility to provide that opportunity for you. Now on the shop floor app settings, um, once we start going deeper into the shop floor application, these settings will give you a little bit of information extra that the shop floor is able to do. Now uh, you can provide a little bit more um, responsibility to your floor application users, uh, such as asking the consumed ingredient quantities from the operator every time a task is finished. So basically, uh, you know, if you're mixing up some dough in a bakery, uh, how much flour did you use and how much uh, water or eggs did you use, they can enter that information. We can also ask the quantity of a finished product for when the operator uh, completes a manufacturing order. So in this use case, it's more like maybe you planned to make 10 units, but you actually made 12. This can happen um, if you have an overrun. Or if you have an underrun or you have scrap, you might have an output of eight whenever you were meant to make 10. So you can actually provide the freedom for the operator to uh, in input this information. This doesn't currently support like a yield type of work use case. It's more about overrun, underrun, uh, as opposed to like QA sort of things. But it could still be an indicator uh, if in case you need to go back in, make changes, do whatever, but that just gives you a flavor. Show the manufacturing order deadline in the floor application. So this basically shows what is the date that the manufacturing order has to be completed by. Now, not to be confused with a task deadline. Katana shows the high level manufacturing order deadline at this point in time, but in the future we'll improve it, especially when we get to like next level real-time planning that will show things like task deadline. Also, there's the sales order deadline on the floor app. This is very, very important for a make to order business because your manufacturing is very much linked to your sales order. So if you have a sales order that you commit a uh, two week turnaround time as a make to order company, then that specific make to order deadline date will be passed to the manufacturing order level too. If your floor team sees that there's a delivery deadline for the sales order, which is different from the manufacturing order, then you can see if there's any um, deviations and it gives your team the empowerment to like report that. So uh, that's a general overview of the way in which you would set up the operator account. And in the next steps, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how it looks to do the actual default assignments to workstations using multiple operators. And we'll start to get into the assignment of tasks and how that looks from the production planner perspective.